So our theme this month is truth. And an invitation to explore the idea of being a people in search of truth. So I would argue that this idea of the search for truth or the quest for truth is pretty central to our identity as Unitarian Universalists. When we read our covenant together this morning, we said love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest for truth is our sacrament. Sacrament means our sacred act, the sacred ritual that we do in our tradition. So that's pretty primary, and that covenant is not unique to Valley UU. We say a version of it at the UU congregation in Phoenix, as does Surprise and many congregations around the country. So we lift up the importance of this quest for truth, and not only in our covenant, but also in our seven principles. So if you're new to Unitarian Universalism, we have what we call seven principles, core values that we seek to live by as UUs. And along with the commitment to the inherent worth and dignity of all people and our commitment to justice and compassion in our lives with each other is a commitment to the free and responsible search for truth and meaning. So this idea of the search for truth is core to us as Unitarian Universalists. So as we dive deeper into what it means to be a people of truth and perhaps even more importantly, a people in search of truth, I want to offer two perspectives on this theme. So the first comes from the 17th century English poet John Milton. He is best known for his epic poem, Paradise Lost. And according to some of his writings later in his life, he is believed to have been a non-Trinitarian, a Unitarian, if you will. And so these verses from John Milton are actually included in our gray hymnal, part of our collection of wisdom words. Milton writes, Our faith and knowledge thrive by exercise, as well as our limbs and complexion. If the waters of truth flow not in a perpetual progression, they sicken into a muddy pool of conformity and tradition. The light which we have been given was not given to us to be ever staring on, but by it to discover onward things more remote from our knowledge. Where there is much desire to learn, there of necessity will be much arguing, much writing, many opinions. But give me liberty to know, to utter, and to argue freely according to my conscience above all liberties. For who knows not that truth is strong? Next to the Almighty, she needs no policies, no stratagems to make her victorious. Let truth and falsehood grapple. Whoever knew truth not to be put, whoever knew truth to be put worse in a free and open encounter. Now, so here, Milton is proclaiming the importance of seeking ever greater truth, and he is especially arguing against any notion that truth is stagnant or must be protected from dissent. For truth, if it really be truth, is strong and will never be worse off for being tested. So does that resonate with anyone, that idea of that search for truth and the liberty to search for truth? It's important. All right, and now a second perspective. So this is a Zen koan, which is a Buddhist parable. Now, Zen koans are meant to be a little humorous and challenging, and really they're meant not to be so easily understood. So I'm going to just share the story, and then we'll just, we'll just um, invite ourselves to be with it without further exploration at this time. So a man approaches a Buddhist master and says, I am seeking enlightenment. All I do is chop wood and carry water. Can you help me? And the Buddhist master, he begins to wave his arms and he says some words and he says, there, you are enlightened. (laughs) And the man says, great, what do I do now? And the master says, chop wood and carry water. So these two reflections offer very different attitudes towards the search for truth. And I want to use them together to problematize our understanding of the quest for truth as our sacred act. 
There are many lines in the John Milton reading that resonate with us as Unitarian Universalists, particularly this idea that truth and knowledge are strengthened and refined through engagement with other ideas or notions of truth. Our faith and knowledge thrive by exercise. If the waters of truth flow not in a perpetual progression, then they sicken into a muddy pool of conformity and tradition. There is wisdom, dare I say truth, in these words. We know of circumstances where we are grateful that clearer understandings of truth, clearer understandings of justice and equality have given way and pushed beyond muddy pools of conformity and tradition. I mean, let's just say that I, as a woman ordained to the ministry, I'm super excited for the ways that we push against muddy pools of tradition and conformity, right? I mean, we know that this is a beautiful thing. It's inherent to us as you use to want to question, to want to challenge, to want to seek more deeply, more fully the truth. And yet, from Milton's passionate plea, a question arises, a question that I wrestle with. Are knowledge and truth always a progression? Are the ways that we move forward as a society in terms of our laws and notions of justice really a reflection of a progression of truth? I understand the progression of truth when it comes to science, when it comes to the exploration of knowledge and our physical world that we, that we gain from previous understanding and we keep pushing forward to gain new insights. But what about truth with more of a, a capital T truth, not knowledge? but the fundamental truths, the profound truths of our living, are they really a progression? Or are they, rather, a reflection of a more central truth being applied to a greater and greater number of people? Is it possible that the truth we often seek is not new, but is actually ancient and timeless? And what we must really wrestle against and what our quest really should be for is against the way our prejudices and fears and politics and even religious doctrines get layered on top of the truth, concealing it and burying it again and again. Is it possible, therefore, that truth is not actually a steady progression but a continual process of unmasking and revealing, a process of calling us into a deeper understanding, deeper layers of wisdom and knowing. And I ask this question because what if it means that truth doesn't win out simply through the force of argument or opinions or writings and grappling? What if the quest for truth requires more of us? What if truth only wins out by living it, by experiencing it and sharing it. And here's where the Zen koan, the Buddhist parable, offers us a different approach. Now this story also speaks of the search for truth. It's the man coming to the Buddhist master and saying, I'm seeking enlightenment, can you help me? And I love that image that the master says, oh sure, there, you are enlightened. The man's like, great, what do I do now? Chop wood, carry water, do what you've always done. The story actually takes, it questions the emphasis on all of our searching for enlightenment and puts the attention back to how we live and to what we do, the common work of our lives. Knowledge is important, study is important. The freedom to seek out wisdom and truth and knowledge is essential to not be confined by muddy pools of conformity and tradition is what allows us as a people to always keep our minds and our hearts open and free to new findings, to new ideas, to new perspectives. This kind of openness allows us to hear, really hear someone else's perspective and reminds us that the truth I see or the way I experience the world is not the way that everyone experiences the world, that we each hold some different truths and different understandings. And by exploring and being open to that, we actually get a more full, diverse, and complex 
picture of life. And that is a good thing. But the parable offers us a caution. It reminds us there, there's more to it than this. For there is something more than the insatiable desire for knowledge. And I want to look to one of the elders of my congregation um, for some wisdom on this topic. So this, this, I'm going to share something that one of our lay leaders has, have written about the search for truth. She is a longtime UU and a longtime member of the Phoenix congregation. She writes, Since I am in the last days of my life, I'm not feeling much like a seeker anymore. At least I'm certainly not seeking answers to the why of life with the same eager enthusiasm of my younger years. I still try to keep a very open mind, listen to new ideas, and accept that the way we've always done it is not necessarily the best way. But the truth is, and I say this with humility, I feel particularly content with a very simple answer to the whole mystery of the meaning of life, one that's been around for thousands of years, love. Perhaps age and the wisdom that comes with it allows us to see that while the quest is valuable, there's also something to be honored in finding some kind of satisfaction with the truth that we have found thus far and living it day by day. Indeed, it may be that the living of our truth rather than merely the search for it is what ought to be our sacred work. Perhaps it is really what our sacrament is as Unitarian Universalists. And so one of the best examples I've seen of this is a man named Walt Courtley, longtime UU. Walt did not believe in any God or any kind of afterlife. His truth was what mattered was the here and now. One of his principles of living was, and I'm quoting him here exactly, he wrote, because I do not believe in an afterlife, it is my reward and responsibility to help make life better here and now. He had found his truth, and he lived it in so many ways. Oh, so Walt was a successful businessman. He built his own company, but he also dedicated a large portion of his life to service. He worked with and often led organizations from the Rotary Club to the Chamber of Commerce to his local UU church board, even serving on the national UUA board. He was a leader and incredible speaker with Veterans for Peace. He was a big brother, and he built a camp for children with Down syndrome. I was honored to spend a lot of time with Walt as he faced his second bout of cancer, one that he would not survive. He spent his last few months not waiting for death, but getting the things he wanted done completed. Mainly, this involved spending time with his grandchildren and live, leaving them with lasting gifts to carry with them. He was also a woodworker, and he made for each of his grandchildren a special gift. He died with a feeling of calm contentment with his truth and how he lived it. He wasn't afraid. He was at peace. <coughs> Now, I only knew him in the last years of his life. He was already in his 80s. I never heard him worry about the search for truth. He found it, and he lived it, and he made an impact on so many people's lives because of that. I don't know that his was the one, capital T, truth, maybe. I think we all as we move through our lives come to find a truth that works for us but what matters is that we live it, not just that we found it, not just that we sought after it. Walt chopped wood and he carried water nearly until his last days. The spiritual epiphany that we seek, and I think this sometimes, I can attest to this, that you know, we feel this need to find a spiritual epiphany sometimes, especially in our younger years. It may not actually be what we think, what lies at the end of all that seeking. Rather, it was what was there before our search, the work of our lives. 
Even after we have discovered truth, the work of our world, the work of our lives of friendship and relationship, marriages and parenting and leadership, all of that work, common as mud, remains ours to do. Guarding the freedom to seek out truth is critical, but so is the work of living it and making it manifest, not in arguments and opinions, though we will still have those, but in the ways that we give of what we have in the ways that we share with one another and how we tend to our world. It's not so much some esoteric discovery of enlightenment that is needed, not so much an insatiable quest for knowledge, but the tasks and the gifts that we share with others is what really makes our lives valuable. It reflects the truth we have found and it is what people remember of us after we are gone. So even as we hold important this quest for truth, let us remember the words of Rumi. Each day we wake up empty. Do not go to the study and take down a book. Pick up a musical instrument. Let the beauty you love be what you do.